Welcome to Ear Biscuits, I'm Link. And I'm Rhett. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we are asking the question, what happened in Thailand and the UK? And we should know, because <laughs> we were there. Um, yes, and this For is- For the past uh, two weeks, we yeah. were on vacation. And as is normal, we haven't talked to each other in any great detail about what we did because we wanted to save it for this. And I would say these are as extensive as any vacations we've ever been on. And as oh, a result, yeah. we gotta talk about both of them. We're actually gonna do this over the course of two episodes. Um, Let's make it a six parter. <laughs> over the next six weeks. And I wanna be Rhett clear. and Link slowly and painfully unravel their vacation. We probably could do that, but we're not. We're not going to yeah. do that. And the only and we're doing it as two parts, not because we're trying to milk as much as we can, but um, how can I put this? Uh, something happened on my vacation, the Scotland part, uh, with my mom <laughs> that um, deserves. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know exactly what happened, but I don't want to. I don't want to short. I don't want to short circuit or cut short the uh, yeah that tale. It deserves its own p place, wow. its own story, and just and it was bad. What happened wasn't good. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. You seem like you're, uh, but well, I know. I mean, this is a teaser. Okay, and okay. that's and this is for not this episode. Sorry, <laughs> this is this is for the Doing next episode. Tease. This is for the next episode. Uh, so I don't know how and, far and, we're gonna get with your vacation, my vacation, and I don't want the second episode to just be about what happened to my mom because I'm sure there'll be stuff that you still wanna talk about, stuff that I wanna talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that we're saving that story for the second one and we're gonna just kinda cover what happened and we'll just kinda explore. Bop, we'll, and we'll bop back and forth. And I got notes, man. With, with mean, all the stuff that happened on our vacations. I, I, we, I, I have notes every, every once in a while, but. I, I have notes. Th this is. I'm gonna be like referencing my notes because Dang. there's. Weren't you there? Yeah, yeah, but so many things happened. Like, okay, well, let me just quickly. Uh, I'll just summarize what what I did. Okay, moving your notes out so it seems like you're not. No, you're, so no. you're off book. No, uh, j j it, this is my side of the table. Okay, <laughs> I could put up a barrier. Hey, I'm just trying to help you, you don't out. Don't reach across to my side of the table. I'm just trying to help what you out. What happens on my side of the table is my business. And you know what? It stays on your side of the table. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, let's, but let's, you just reached across and grabbed my let's notes, put up man. a barrier. So we can't see each other. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's a podcast. We don't need to see each other. Um except for the video. There are version. some podcasts where they're like in different places in the nation or the world. Uh, those are really awkward though. Um so and this isn't? I, uh, as you know, I took my family, my family being my immediate family, my, my wife and kids, but also my brother, his wife, their four kids, Dang. and my parents. Uh, this was a, a long awaited and planned trip to the homeland of Scotland. And the whole idea was uh, to spend a week in Scotland with them, which we did. Uh, going to three different places in Scotland and then we dropped them at the airport after a week uh, and then just the, the California McLaughlins continued on down through the UK, stopping uh, well, into England, stopping in York and then the Cotswolds, a day in Oxford. It's so funny that all of the places that you're naming are so different sounding than all the places that I went. Yeah, oh yeah, we had definitely opposite vacations. Yeah, I mean, I guess so I could have been in like Greenland or Antarctica or something, but, uh, and then and then London, which of course we've been to and then you spent a weekend. Um, and I've got some, I've got some developed thoughts about London now. Oh yeah? So I, I wanna compare notes, literally <laughs> compare notes. <laughs> With you because you spent a week there, but you went to uh, so many places. You had to look at you had to look at your notes to remember even six, that. Six well, six different lodging, lodgings, in mm. two weeks, um, which is uh, which is a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to hear about it. You, as a McLaughlin, you went back to the to the McLaughlin epicenter with all the McLaughlins. Oh, that was the, that was the I, idea, yeah. It's, and the idea was that was supposed to be special. So I guess the big question that oh, it, it was now, very, it was very oh, special. Don't answer it. It's very special. Yeah, but was it? Let's well, let's, it let's find special? out. It was special. In let's a, find in out. a particular way over this and the next episode. Of course, you know, uh, I'm Ty. 
Uh, Neil uh, is a is a Thai last name. Right. So um, I've always wanted to go back and get in touch with with my. Oh, there you go. There's your motivation. My family. <laughs> uh, no, I just took my immediate family. And smart, uh, smart. That's, that's, that's my <laughs> wife, my three children, and that's it. It's a lot cheaper uh, when you do that. I would have. Oh, let me, let me just say. Let me just say, I uh, spent more money more quickly than I've ever spent. Wow. You could, could I mean, you, it was just like if it was like one of those cartoons where I saw like a cast register just going. <laughs> 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 that's. I kept just seeing that <laughs> in my periphery. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I um. I, I, I guess I spent some money. Is that what this is about now? <laughs> hey, man, I spent money too. I'm just saying. I've been think like I've been thinking about it a lot, and you know me. I don't think about money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But when you spend that much that money, does say a you, lot. you have to start thinking about it. Uh, we took the 14 hour plane ride to uh, into Hong Kong, and then immediately connected to Bangkok. That was not the original plan. I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, stayed in Bangkok for a number of days, and then we flew to Chiang Rai, which is the northern mountainous territory right on the border of Thailand with Laos and Myanmar in the Golden Triangle. We stayed oh. there for another handful of days. Um, elephants, jungle, well, I want mountains. Ju I'll, what I'll call a jungle, but it, w it wasn't a jungle. Well, what was it? It was trees. And it, was, it was just very um, uh, lush vegetation. Lush, lush it's vegetation. A jungle. It's a jungle. To me, it was, yeah. but probably technically, it was not. I, what is, uh, it was very I, nice. What is a jungle technically? I don't know because I didn't go to one. I don't think. Mm. And then I flew down to Koh Samoy. Ko means island. Samoy is the name of that island. Koh Samoy. So uh, island Samoy. So then, we, so we wrapped up our trip with just the quintessential beachfront hammock on the beach, coconut in hand, corn cob in the other hand. If you follow me on Instagram, good gracious, <laughs> Link Lamont. So that's how I wrapped it up. Seven, seven flights, yeah, total to get around all those places. Once you factor in connections, uh. With a Who, but who's counting? With, oh, my wife is definitely <laughs> counting because she has a flight phobia, and I'm not trying to make light of it. I'm just trying to do an Oprah impression. But oh man, she was a champ. She took it like a champ. It wasn't easy mm. when you're coming into that island. Boy, we took a little drop out of the sky, a little bit. Zoop pop. It's like a little the like interesting. A, a little I will free say fall. the interesting thing about. Um, your family having someone who is has a flight phobia. You've had a lot more flight issues than anyone that I know. Like if you go back through like the stories of being like on a tarmac forever or experiencing really crazy turbulence. Yeah, like I I'm just, the reason she has a like a, I just have flight fear. I just haven't had that. I probably would be scared if I'd had a bad experience, but I haven't ever had. Anything that I, you know, well, I don't worth dwell talking on it. about. You know, um, yeah, it is my fault. Um, and you know what? She loves me enough to endure it. Well, that wasn't what I was suggesting, but it, you're, that's what you're internalizing, so. No, I'm just owning it. Okay. <laughs> it's the truth. You're not, you're not. Somehow the, it's my fault. You're not the pilot, so. <laughs> or the airline or whoever's fault it is. I, mean, I don't wanna be in legal trouble here. I'll <laughs> just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, we we skipped all around. We we did lots of things. I I, I got a I got notes here, but I don't want anybody to see them, so I'm gonna keep them off camera. I just wanted to seem like I remember what happened. Well, you'll know when I'm referencing my notes. It's just so I can know when to say what, not when to say, but what to remember. One thing I didn't do is shave. If you would like to acknowledge my beard, I don't know if you're. Oh, I've well, I've I don't know if you're threatened. I'm not. I, I don't I've mean already to threaten you. I mean, I I've already seen it. And uh, do I look like I would be threatened by a, <laughs> a small beard at this point? <laughs> yeah, your beard is getting large, uh, man. Yeah, right. That's that's a that's an in-depth conversation for another time. Uh, basically, at a certain point, I'm on vacation. I'm not going to shave. And if I skip two days with with travel water 
and what it does to my face, it like makes the hairs harder or something. What? It's even, it gets, it's harder for me to, sh to hack through my beard. And so I'm, I'm hacking it one day and I'm like, you know Travel what? water? It's a different consistency. Well, it's I like, know about that, yeah. Like hard or soft, it's a little different than my home water. Well, definitely, yeah. And it. And I, it, I know about and that. And it makes my hair but on it doesn't, my face. But, but sometimes, get, I mean, theoretically, sometimes it would make it easier to shave. It made it harder to shave. I'm saying in practice. So this particular my, travel my, water. My razor got clogged up. So you just say tie water. I didn't have a backup. I didn't wanna put it on tie. No, no, I'm, I'm, just, saying, no, I'm just saying that some water's soft, some water's hard. You, you, you know it when you, you go on vacation and you start lathering up and you're like, oh, the lather's different. Yep. Yep. You're like, oh, travel water. I know what you mean, but. Plus, I just wanted to, I really just wanted to know how much gray is on my face now? Oh, well, quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm getting. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're in the salt is beating the pepper at this point <laughs> territory. Is it really though? Uh, yeah, or is oh, it yeah. just the lighting? The, the salt is. T I think it's 50-50. You no, know, well, I mean, maybe overall, but definitely like in the most forward facing part, the the, Right, right here, salt is seventy five percent. And I remember when I first started to get facial hair, this is the place where the place that's widest now is the place where I first started to get facial hair, and that makes sense. That's not what happened with me because I'm getting white right here, and I didn't start growing <laughs> the, on the back corners of your chin jawline, right here, and then a little bit in the middle, right under your lip. Which I will say. That this is probably, I mean, well, the mustache is the thing that came in first for most dudes. So my mustache I, is I've like got, the, I've got no gray, the in blackest there. part. And this, and it yeah, goes so down. Yeah, so your theory is not, not, yeah. not true. It doesn't work. And it's blacker right Did you here know that on the corners of my mouth. We'll discuss it looks this. Like I've got like a horseshoe mustache with like an old man growing around it. We'll discuss this in detail later. But how much older do I look? The t uh, Twelve years. The terminal length of your hair changes based on how far it is from the center of your face. So the terminal length of hair right in the middle of your face is the shortest. I've been watching lots of videos about beards. Well your hair looks the longest in the, in the middle of your face. No, no, like right here. So the terminal length of your hair right there, the see that? The soul patch? I have not cut or trimmed the soul patch in 36 months. Ew. And that's the, that's the terminal length, that's as long as it's gonna get. Have you washed it? All the time. Okay, good. And uh, if you're gonna wash anything, and then also right it should here. be your butt crack. But if you're gonna wash two things, it should be your butt crack and then that soul patch. But it moves, it, it, it basically changes over the course of your face. And I don't know if that, I don't think that applies to the hair on your head. But you haven't researched that. Because I don't have like really short hair right in the middle. I guess, well, <laughs> technically maybe like a, like a widow's peak is a little short. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, I learned that, that watching YouTube videos about that baby beards. Hair. We're devoting two episodes to our vacation and we're going in depth about our facial hair because that's what we care most about. I can't keep this thing much longer. It's itching the crap out of well, my face. Well, I mean, you get pa you'll get past that, but you'll, then you'll have a white beard. And I mean, I, I, uh, no. I think it'd be cool. It's fine. <laughs> I I'll get, just I'll like get glasses. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, <laughs> I, I just really wanted to know. And now I do. Yeah. I'm gonna shave this stuff off. I think when we're done with this podcast, I'm gonna I'm gonna shave it off. Oh, how's the water here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's my kind of joke, man. That's my kind of joke. That's a very dad joke. Yeah, it's not yeah. really. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's not really a joke. <laughs> yeah, well, no, but it kind of is. It's a quip. It, it was pretty good. It's a quip. It was not a good. not a sponsor. Yeah. Speaking well, of which, it, occasionally a sponsor. Yeah. Let's get into sponsors, man, just to get that over with. Okay. Uh, is Quip a sponsor? Because that would be really cool right now. Well, today uh, the sponsor is us. <laughs> these uh, these these mugs, Ear Biscuits mugs, available at Mythical dot com for uh, ten percent off. <laughs> ten percent off. If you want your face to look older. Get a mug, hold it next to it. If you want your face to you look younger, drink from it. It's that magical. And Watch. that's not when the... I drink from it, I look younger. See, yeah. And then when I move it away, oh wow, twelve years, 12 older. years older. Yeah, 50, 52. How old are you? Fifty three. Fifty three. Uh, Fifty three. I'm forty one. Now, I honestly, I think that you just you look closer to your age. I, I I'd be charitable and say that. 
I think most people would look at you with that beard and be like, oh, he's prematurely gray. I don't think they would be like, oh, he's old. You, you look at Anderson Cooper, you don't think, he's 72, you know what I'm saying? Premature has a negative connotation in every instance that I can think of it being used. Prematurely smart. <laughs> no, no, okay, <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've never heard that. Yeah. Prematurely graduated. I've never yeah. heard that. Yeah, yeah I've heard of a like premature early bloomer. Yeah. Um, premature baby, a I, premature. I'm I, I'm just saying that I don't think you look fifty three. Emission. I don't think it adds twelve years to your ex, your your real age. I think it gets you closer to your actual age. I like the fact that you're backtracking a little bit, but you're doing it within the ad that's only in the video version. Right, well I like, I like to make, I like to reward the people who watch the video So version. for the video version, Red actually thinks that I look my age, but for the audio only version. 12 years older. 12 years older. Uh, go to mythical.com, we don't have to say mythical.store anymore. It's all one thing It's now. all one thing. Mythical. Go to mythical.com, get all types of stuff. Beard oil, we both need that now. I, hey, I could use the beard oil before I, Right, right before you shave it. Yeah. I wouldn't advise that. Oh, okay. All right, so let's get into this. Um, man, you you wanna start? Where, where did you, where did you, where did you land? Edinburgh. Edinburgh, is that how you say it? Well, that's how I say it. Okay, tell me about Which, it. Which interestingly, <laughs> is when, <laughs> Jesse raised an interesting question uh, while we were traveling through the throughout the UK, Scotland and England. You're 92. Kingdom. Uh, everyone in our group, me included, had this tendency to, when we were not around locals, as we were talking amongst ourselves, we would go into our best accents of <laughs> uh, of the region, right? <laughs> yeah. So obviously that started as a Scottish thing, and then by the time we were just with our family in England, it went. We were like trying to change the way that we talked, and Jesse, and I'm not going to attempt to do it because it's not good. I don't. Have I, it won't. It's it, you. It will sound stupid. Uh, not that I'm unwilling to do stupid things, but yeah, do it. It's okay if you do it. I, right? I, you've got to have some words that you go to. <laughs> you words, but, words. Is that the word that you go to? Well, word. It helps. Word. When, what What happens is you'll be in a conversation with a local person, mm -hmm. and then they'll walk away, and then you'll start talking. Like, you, you'll You'll immediately start talking like them because <laughs> you just had this interaction with them. And Jesse was like, do people do this when they come to America and we just don't know it? Well. Are Americans the worst at this thing? Going to a, now first of all, mm. I will also say that for good reasons, there are certain places that if you were to do that, it would just be immediately labeled as a racist. Right? Yeah. Like, well, for instance, I did if, it. If, if, I did it in right, Thailand. Right. Every time somebody, no, I did not. You did do not it, do and it. I'm not about to do it because I would. It'd be. It wouldn't be right. But I'm right. Right, and I don't want to explore the whys of, of what that what that is necessarily. But it seems pretty obvious that me as a McLaughlin going back to you know quote unquote my people, I can go back and I can try to sound like them. Whatever. There are still some groups you can make fun of. I think Scottish and English people are still still two of them. Uh, so. But it, I, Jesse was like, I would, but someone from Thailand, someone with a Thai accent, I would like to hear them do a, a Scottish accent. Well, that's that's an interesting point. That's not what I'm. <laughs> I'm talking about. Is it the, wrong for me to say that? I'm talking about the phenomenon of Americans <laughs> talking in the British or Scottish accent, the the English or Scottish accent when they're in those places, and then do people from Scotland and England when they come to America start talking like, hey guys, you know when like our friend Jaden from Australia does, yeah. he does his American accent and he always goes into this character, <laughs> <laughs> which has got to be how right. we perceive, they yeah. perceive us yes. and we, we go into a character. You're, yeah. you're not, you don't seem like a Scottish person, you seem like a character, like a, a character like that would version. be in like some play. <laughs> You know, I. <laughs> you know, it was just an interesting question because uh, I, I think that we're probably the worst at doing that. Maybe not though. I mean, I I know for a fact that many people that I interact with, like 
acquaintances or less, not friends, in Los Angeles, I will be having a conversation. People come into the office who we don't know, and it'll be for a meeting, and I know for a fact that over the course of the conversation, they will start to adopt a Southern accent and it, and some people will go farther than others and it- Yeah, it happens it, with Southern accents all the time. It will seem like an impression and I- and I, Wait, This happens with you? Yes. It, I, this happens with our wives a lot more than it happens with us. I, so. I, but I notice that people are doing it and it's, and I think, do they think that I've been doing some, that I've been doing an accent for comedic effect at times, and then they start it. doing it for comedic effect. I think it's just a natural, I, I feel like this is so sli then, a slightly different. But again, these are mostly Americans that I'm interacting with, and, and I'm, I feel I'm like that's victim. I feel like that's affecting your accent a little bit to be even more relatable, which I understand that and have probably done that. But this is more like arguing with each other about who does the best Scottish accent. You know, like 12, yeah. Americans going around doing horrible Scottish accents and trying to say who's doing a better one. Like that is a, I, I believe that's an American phenomenon. I don't think that 12 Scottish people come to America, sit around, I, maybe they do, let me know if I'm wrong. But. Um, You're assuming the worst, let's hope for the best. Yeah, so we started in Edinburgh and then we, uh, and we, you know, we had limit, the way that I kept characterizing the entire vacation was, this is a sampler platter. Mm of mm -hmm. everywhere, of Scotland and then of England because any particular place that we were at, we could have stayed for much longer. And I think that the thing that kind of wore on me, and even though I tried to prepare myself for this, was I felt uh, responsible for the, for the enjoyment of the entire group, right? This was you my should. idea. Your idea. This is my idea, I'm paying for it. Cha -ching. Uh, and, uh, and I will say, uh, big, big thanks to Jenna for being very involved in the planning of this. In fact, there was sort of a, there was a runner, a runner that pe people would do something like we'd have a good meal and then my dad would be like, thanks Jenna. <laughs> you know, Even though like, she, w she wasn't there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Because, you didn't invite her to come, you just. Right, uh, and, we, she, and she was also instrumental in, in planning your vacation too. So it, a lot of the specific choices about, well this is where we're going to be was based on her research and her kind of planning that out. Um, Are you setting her up to blame her for whatever the crap happened to your mom? No, no, because that in particular was all my idea, like oh. that whole thing, oh. where, where that happened. Okay, good. No, but I'm saying that. Great, uh, actually. <laughs> even though I had someone um, to help us make the decisions about what we were going to do, I still felt like oh, it, it's on I, you. it was all on me. And so I try if to be very- If it goes good, it's on Jenna, if it goes bad. I, I try to be very strategic about, okay, you got 12 people ranging in age from 10 yeah. to like 75. Or, you, it's tough what you did, man. And, uh, and, I, and I told Jesse going in, I was like, I am already just committing to not enjoying this. I mean, I know that sounds like a very pessimistic thing, but like I have a tendency to get really excited about vacations and I always think that they're gonna be great and then they can be a little bit hard or disappointing. And so I just was like, listen, I'm not doing this for my personal enjoyment. I'm doing it for the enjoyment of the group, which I actually think that even that was unhealthy. I should have gone in with very little attachment to outcome, mm -hmm. but, and let me just say, apart from that thing that happened to my mom, which I'll talk about, it was an incredible vacation. It was it was great, but there was this constant pressure of we got to go to so many places. Uh, there's this sense of FOMO in every place that we went, and then this like, okay, I've got to start planning. Like, okay, I have to tell the group that we need to be out the door at eight thirty because we really need to be out the door at nine. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like I had to start kind of adjusting to the way that the group was going to Did behave. Did you carry around a, a pole with like a flag on the end that no. like had the McLaughlin and we didn't, standard? we didn't all wear the same like neon t-shirts. It wasn't a family reunion. How did everybody stay together? Were you, uh, I don't were even you know. I don't, I, I, we didn't even do a buddy system. I didn't, just nobody got lost as far as I know. So like give me, g give me a rundown of day one if you're like rattling through this thing or well, like what's the first thing you did? Okay, well, so. The first thing I did, we met in JFK. Like they flew from North Carolina. We I'm not really interested no, in the airports. Well, well, you you aren't going to understand. That this is this is relevant. I'm not just trying to start from the beginning. 
I made the decision to get first class tickets for the adults in the group. Now there's six adults in this group. First class international tickets are expensive. Uh, but I decided to do this because I was like, we're gonna fly overnight on Friday night. And I want my parents especially to be sleep. able to sleep because getting a good night's rest helps so much with that adjustment to yeah. the time change. They didn't sleep at all. Like my mom may have slept for like 30 minutes even though we had these like lay down seats. It was like she just couldn't get comfortable. So right out, right out the gate, I felt a little bit like a failure. I was like, and also it was like, I saw that cast register. I was like, ooh, that was for nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Did you, but, go, did you go over and like lay her seat down, tuck her in? Nope. Uh, I'd, have, I'd have tucked my that's, mom that's in the flight, That's the flight attendant's job, or at least my dad's. Uh, but yeah, so they didn't really sleep, neither Sounds of them like a lot slept of people very failed. well. And, uh, and so we get there, because my idea was like, you sleep and then you get there and then we're gonna like immediately bagpipes go do yeah play bagpipes find the nearest bagpipe start squeezing on it right um, begin experiencing the city, which we kind of had to do because you couldn't get to your room until like three o'clock, uh, which okay. I think we ended up getting into one room at like one p.m. Anyway, so the first day, first of all, it's just raining, just like just torrential raining at times. What does it rain there? Is it like is it water like? Whiskey? Travel water. What are they drinking? I don't know, Scotland? but I did see something Beer? that said today's rain is tomorrow's whiskey. I saw that a lot of different places. Mm, well, you had tomorrow's whiskey. They make the whiskey out of rain. Um, but uh, so I was like, uh, and then I looked at the forecast, and l bo for both England, Scotland, and England, like if you just look at like your quick weather app on the phone, mm -hmm. it was rain whiskey, cloud, whiskey, whiskey, every single day. Every single day, and I was like, mm, okay. You're on a downward spiral emotionally, it sounds like. Well, and, and, and I immediately was just kind of overcome with this, we gotta see everything. Now, I, I wanna, I'm gonna talk pretty extensively about the driving because that was a thing, but I'm, let me throw it back over to you because well, uh, that okay. was kind of my mindset going in was this, this, this weight of responsibility. I just need to know, do bagpipes happen at any point? Just yes or no? I, yeah. Okay, good. Um, I, I could not have done what you did with planning for that many people. I mean, you, you know, I mean, based on my report from London when it was just me, Christy, and Lily, like I was a wreck on the train platform. I don't wanna rehash that, but like, I mean, I thought about just like having a lottery about who was gonna go with me on this trip just to keep it so I could have a good time. <laughs> just logistically, I love my entire family equally. You know, we're planning this thing. Um, we were gonna go to Hong Kong for a few days, Bangkok for a few days, and then Chiang Rai and Koh Samoy. But then Christy and I made the collective decision to simplify and spend more time in less places. Um, so we cut out Bangkok. And we were just gonna stay in Hong Kong because you have to fly into Hong Kong anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, th there's so much political unrest in Hong Kong there had, for weeks there had been protest, and it, since it's gotten uh, even more uh, dire, you've seen it in the news, um, sit-ins at the airport, protests all throughout the city uh, with Hong Kongers basically. Is that the correct term? Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. That's what's, uh, that's on t what's on all over Twitter. I just thought you made it up. Nope, yeah. And um, really, yeah, Hong Kongers. How about Hong Kongians? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stay out of it. I mean, I just feel like stay I should help. It. I should help. Well, okay, well then stay in in a Scottish accent. <laughs> Hong Kongers. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> that worked. Uh, I think it was two days. I, it might have been twenty four hours before we were leaving. I don't know exactly, but it was. It was. We were. We were packing. Uh, finalizing our packing and we make the decision, there's people getting beat up, protesters are getting beat up on the, sh on, uh, on the streets of Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, like Hong Kongers, yeah. A few days before this. <laughs> so we, we made the decision to not stay in Hong Kong at all. I had done all this research for Hong Kong. 
Oh, and it's all of this reading. Yeah, and I, an I, amazing city. I, you were excited, I know, because Jess, that was like Jesse's favorite place that she went in, w when she was over there. And then we decided last minute we we canceled all of that and just booked a hotel in Bangkok and started finding things to do in Bangkok, like as we were packing to go to mm -hmm. not Hong Kong anymore. Turns out we didn't have to pack anything different though. So I didn't have to change that. It was just, but right off the bat, like I'm discombobulated big time. Right. I'm in a totally different city than I'm gonna be in. Um, but we get to Bangkok and we were told from friends who had been there that Bangkok is really overwhelming and there's a river that runs through the middle of it and our hotel was on the river and we were told you can do a lot of river taxis as opposed to just doing street taxis because the transportation is the streets are just really crazy. So the more you can yeah. just travel on the river, the better. I'm like, well, that sounds fun anyway. Um, so we get there and it's, it's late at night, so we check into the hotel and we go to sleep. We get up the next morning and we're like, all right, let's do some exploring. Day one, we're just gonna kinda, we're gonna get on this river taxi, we're gonna go to, up the river or down the river, I don't know which way. We're gonna get off over here where the concierge told us that we could walk around and we're just gonna start walking around. Hmm. It was so hot there. I mean, it was, I mean, we had just spent a few days in North Carolina the week before, like right. filming some stuff, and it was, it was, it was more torturous than that in terms of the humidity. I mean, it was, it was just. Yeah, did you wear just, a tank top? Yeah, I was like, I wish I had a tank top. I yeah. have, I, I have I, a tank I, top. You should ask me, I would have told you to pack some. I, I, didn't, I don't own one. Well, As a policy. There's a time for a tank top and I think Thailand is the place. I could have gotten one there. Cause let me tell you, they sell everything everywhere in Bangkok. <laughs> We're walking around, the, like the the main, um, one of the main attractions which is the Golden Palace was closed because it was the king's birthday. There's pictures of the king everywhere. Everybody loves the king. Uh, do they love him or do they have to love him? Uh, it seems like they legitimately love this guy. Well, it's effective propaganda. When his dad died, um, we had a tour guide for another thing that I'm gonna tell you about. We got kind of the lowdown uh, on how they felt about the king and at least from her perspective, she was like, the king and the queen are like members of our family. We have pictures of them in the house. Everyone does. And it's not something that's required. Heard that before. It's not something that's required. This is her talking. It's just how we feel about him. And when, when the previous king died for like, there was like months of mourning. He'd been the king from like being a teenager until he was like almost 90. So like everybody lived their entire lives just knowing this guy's their king and he's like on billboards everywhere. How, um, how long has the new king been the king? Uh, a couple of years. Oh. It was his birthday, as I said. But um, when, the, when the previous king died, like all of the programming on television changed to be sadder or commemorative and everything was changed to be in black and white <laughs> for over a month. All all television shows, they just like, put the black and white filter on it. If you die, uh, do you want me to continue on with GMM in black and white for a month because I'll do it? Six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think they worship the king. Like, I, I didn't spend too much time digging into this, but. <laughs> okay, well. They're 94% of the population is Buddhist, okay? Right. So that's where, they were, that, that's where their allegiance lies, okay? Right, right. But the king is in the mix, <laughs> let me okay. tell you, because his pictures are everywhere. <laughs> of course, the Buddha is, is lounging everywhere too. Yeah, right. Everywhere you go, Buddha is kicking it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's Buddha sitting, covered in bronze, big ones, little ones, laying down ones. <laughs> I mean, Buddha, Buddha will, Recline. Oh yeah, he will relax. He will, and he doesn't just... have a lot of core strength either. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why are you gonna why are you gonna be critical of the? Buddha? No, I'm not being critical. I'm just I'm just <laughs> saying that like he's not worried about that. <laughs> you know, uh, you talking about that? You talking about that belly? Uh, yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's very relaxing to sit like that. You ever sat like that? Just just let it all hang. Man, out? I gotta look at my notes because you threw me <laughs> off, man. You threw me off talking about. Core strength. <laughs> now, you know, I've told you this story about last time my dad came into Los Angeles, we were driving down the street, I was taking him back to the airport and we passed a Thai restaurant and it, the sign said, Thai food. Right. And he said out loud, 
fire food. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, he did. And uh, so you may be wondering if you knew that story, if that's the whole reason I went to Thailand. And I've come to grips with the fact that I think the answer is subconsciously, absolutely yes. <laughs> yeah, why Because not? my dad said Thai food, I was like, I gotta go get me some of that Thai food. Right. So we're walking around, it's blistering hot. The palace is closed, one of the main things to see, it's like, it's a mile just to walk past the outside of the palace. What do you have on? I have on breathable shorts. I got some walkable shoes. Okay, so not with open, a nice toe box. Not open open toed. You're, no, no. One, no one's doing open toed. Um, yeah, I think Lily is. She's okay. got some sandals on. All right, t shirt and other things which I'll get into later. Okay, but um, people are on the street. The streets are like Target. The streets are like Walmart. They're selling stuff everywhere, street markets. Right. There's a flower market. It's like the second largest flower market in the world to Holland. And they're like, you go in there, it's amazing how much stuff they're, they're making, floral arrangements that then are you, you can take to the temples as like, uh, what's the word? Like offering? An offering. Um. There's pe there's pe Thailand is famous for street food. Oh yeah. You know, they're they're like grilling stuff everywhere. Uh anything you can smell and imagine smelling, you smell. Anything you can imagine hearing, you're talking honking, screaming, grunting, scraping. <laughs> you hear it all at once. You smell it all at once and you feel it. You feel you feel everything. You feel the heat. When you someone feel scrapes you, sweat coming out of places that I didn't know I were places on me. Right. Um, and we walked for a long time. Did you get Just some of that it. food? Just like random. Hey, let's. We picked up some stuff like oh, there's a. There's a stand. It's just a bunch of pomegranates, and you can just got to get pomegranate juice for like twenty cents. Now, is there any concern about twenty nine baht to a dollar? So it's like oh, Can thousand on, baht is just nothing. Going up and I mean, there's a lot of places you can't just go drink the juice of the pomegranate. You'll end up with crazy diarrhea. But that's not the case here. Did you did you look into that? Or you I just... got to, I got to get back to that too. Okay. But I, I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say no, not exactly. That didn't happen. Okay. Um, but you had you had drink, checked on that. We drink bottled water, but, but you can't we, do that in Mexico, for instance. Like you should. I didn't really check on it. I just wanted some pomegranate juice. <laughs> Shrug. Okay. All right, good. Um, it's it's so hot. Like it, everybody start. I, I think there's gonna somebody's gonna have a heat stroke. We're just not used to this. Right. Like my family is wilting, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta find some AC. And they do. There's malls everywhere too. But I was in a I was in a place where there wasn't one of these. They have these like huge indoor air conditioned malls that everybody goes to. Um, so I tried to find one on Google, and we went to this mall, and it turned out to be pretty small. But it was like still three stories, and it kind of felt like a market kind of thing. But it was in the same thing as outside, but inside. So not the type of mall that I would picture just saying the word mall. But they had a food court on the top floor, okay. so we're up there, and I'm just trying to get an iced coffee and trying to get trying to get people hydrated because it's important, right? And um, I'm wondering if I'm gonna get recognized in this land. And lo and behold, about that time, this guy comes up to me, and it's like it, it turns out he was a local, and he was like, "Are you from?" Uh, he had a he had a good. He spoke really good English. He he didn't have an, that much of an accent. He was like more of a traveled guy, but he was from there originally. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know if he grew up in Thailand, but he lived there now and was from there. Um, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm I'm him." And he's like, "Can I can I get a photo?" And we're like, "He was super nice." And he was like, "What are you doing here?" <laughs> and I'm like, "Yeah." That's and what, I, people I tend like, to ask that. Well, my dad you are. went past sign in LA. <laughs> you know, I was like, "No, dude! I've just every everyone who's been to Thailand has told me it's amazing. I've got to come, and so I'm here and with my family, and it's our first full day." And he's like, 
no, why are you here in this food court? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, I understand why you're in Bangkok. It's a major travel destination. Right. Um, food wasn't bad in, in the food court. We, we recovered and then we, we, we hit the streets again and uh, wrapped things up. So uh, I can give you more, but what's the next thing that happened on your trip? One of the things I was a little bit worried about was the driving. Uh, as you may be aware, uh, you drive on the left side of the road. You Okay. So I'm, I'm worried about this, uh, and it's not just that I have to drive on the left side of the road, it's that I'm driving a large van, a nine passenger, which that is key for later, uh, van. Okay. Uh, so it was uh, like this. Like one of those big white vans. Well, it was black. It was this, uh, okay. it was like one of those Mercedes vans that, uh, there's three rows of three seats, including the front seat is three rows. I mean, it's three seats. Like there's a seat in the middle. We didn't ever use it. But, so it's a big van driving on the left side of the road and it's already raining. Mm-hmm. And I'm also getting out at the airport, so I'm not like on some country road. It's like you're immediately in it. You thrust. And, and then, uh, and of course, I'm driving one van and my brother's driving the other, other van. He's done this before. He's driven on the left side of the road in, uh, somewhere in the Caribbean, I don't know. Oh, in the Caribbean. Uh, but he was also like, he said it wasn't fun and I was kind of freaked out you're most con- of the time. I would imagine you're constantly, <clears throat> you know, second guessing if you're, if, you're on the, if you're in the right place, if you're going the right direction. Well, let me get to that. Oh, um, so, and then I noticed as we go, we, we go up to the woman at the, at the rental car desk, my brother and I do, and, um, She's like, there's a, there's a big container of wristbands and the wristbands say, stay on the left. A, like a, like the same kind of like rubber wow. wristbands that we sell. Oh wow. That say mythical on them. You can get, and so she was like, take one of those. That's, so I'm like, okay. That's foreboding. So I put one on my left hand <clears throat> and didn't wanna really confuse myself. And. How could that work? And then my brother is like, well no, then they're like, would you like the additional insurance? This is always a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, this yeah. is this a frustrating question. I hate that question. Cause you're like, well I don't, I don't know, I don't think I, ha- I don't think I need it. Right. <laughs> you, you know? I think because I have my own insurance. But because of my insurance and then I've got a credit card. My credit card has The credit something. card is supposed to have something. There was something on the fine print of that. Yeah, so I think I'm okay. I think I'm okay because it's Jenna. expensive. <laughs> Figure that out, oh, please. And, and also, because of the time change, I mean, like all the people that I need, my lifeline, Jenna, <laughs> is sleeping yeah, yeah, at yeah. this point because this, this, this is like the morning, right? So so I'm just like, ah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go for it because I've got the credit card and my insurance and of course, the greatest insurance policy is me as a driver. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, put that on the wristband. <laughs> and, uh, and put that, okay, so you, you put on the wristband. I'm surprised. Yeah, put on the wristband. Because that is shame. No, it's not. That's it's like safety. I mean, why not put like a stamp on your forehead that says "Dumb Tourist"? Well, it's a wristband, <laughs> so it's a little more subtle than that. But then, with it, we, I get to the car, and I will say there was a Mercedes and there was a Hyundai, and I felt bad about this, but I took the Mercedes because <laughs> I was like, I'm paying for both the Mercedes and the Hyundai. The least I'm going to do is get the Mercedes. Okay, but also. I had to continue on with my family for another week and I was like, okay. But a Mercedes van is it d- kinda like a. There's no difference, yeah. ultimately. I mean, mine's a little nicer. But <laughs> it, it's really no difference. So. Um, uh, this, seat, the seats have massagers in them, but and, there's no uh, difference. And the, uh, we get into the, the, the vans and then there's another, there's a large sticker on the windshield that says stay, stay on, on the, the left. left. I'm like, this must be a thing. This must be an important thing to remember. This must be something that people don't always remember. <laughs> if they've, you yeah. know, something had to happen before the wristbands and the sticker. You drive with your lizard brain a lot, you know? And also, in that picture, in that thing on the windshield that says stay on the left, is a picture of a roundabout and like how to enter and navigate oh, a roundabout. Yeah. Oh, God. So I'm like, okay, roundabout. Was there blood on the hadn't, hadn't picture? Thought, thought about was there it. like. There's blood all over the Deca- bumper. De- <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, oh, and then my brother asks the the woman who's showing us to the car. She like we're, He sees the wristbands and the stickers and everything. He's like, so, I mean, when was the last time an American had an accident? Oh, 
with you guys. And she and her face was like, do you really want me to answer that? <laughs> and she said, this morning? Yeah. So I was like, oh, this happens. And then I'm thinking. She should have said, it's about to again. And then I'm really thinking, like the insurance thing, I'm like, I don't even know if, I, if, I, if I'm covered. I'm like, oh, what? so you said no. I can that. enter into financial ruin. You know, <laughs> it's like I've got a Mercedes van here. It's, how much right. does this thing cost? Hit a Scotsman, he, he's, he's gonna sue you. I get in the car, I start it up, and f first of all, task one is just to back the car into a different space so that everyone can load their luggage into the car underneath this awning. Please tell me you backed up and all you heard was a bunch of bagpipes that uh, you'd run over. No, I, uh, but it felt so foreign. It, it really it really did. You I, couldn't even back up? No, no, it was, it was like, man, there's a whole lot of car over there. <laughs> I'm not used to so much car over there and there's no car over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, wow, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a lot to think about that yeah. I haven't thought about over there. I never thought about over there. Now mm -hmm. there's where most of there is, you know? Yeah. Like that's the first thing that happens. Where I'm thinking about, there's nothing to think there's about. There's nothing there. But I keep thinking about that. There's something where there wasn't something and oh, there's God. nothing where there was something. That was the biggest thing and, and so you're like, oh, I have to account for the footage over here so I don't run into things oh, with the left side of the mm -hmm. car because mm -hmm. I'm on the right side of the I car. I get it, you know? I get it now, that's yeah. With the brain I understand on paper. Um. So, but we get, I back in and get everything packed into the car and then I'm like, okay, Cole, here, you know, this is the address, this is where we're going, the address of the hotel. I'm sure we're gonna get separated. We can't be trying to be together. That's smart. Like, we can't worry about that. That's because, the only smart thing you've said. Because someone's going to make a mistake, so forget this whole staying together thing. Put the put the address in. If you hit someone, I don't wanna see it, is what that was code for. And uh, mistake number one was I just pull out of the rental car parking lot and realize, and then I see two large trucks coming at me what? in two lanes. And I'm no. like, I'm going the wrong Already? way. Already? No, but hold on. I wasn't on the wrong side of the road. It was, I I wasn't, I was still in the airport. So I, I'm not like out on the highway. Okay. I had gone out an entrance only thing <laughs> because I didn't understand that the, the, they don't have, first of all, they have so don't blame many. It on this sign. No, they have so many signs you that went explain, out the but the sign didn't say no exit. It just was a symbol that I didn't understand, and it looked like I could go. You know what that symbol means? It mean, oh, I know now. It means don't go that don't, way. No, it, don't enter. But you know what? In America, it Mind says the gap. wrong way, which I, that computes to me. Wrong way. Okay, I won't go that way. <laughs> Uh, so, but I immediately, I, it, it, again, it, they weren't like, they were going like five miles per hour because we were all still in like the parking area kind of situation. So I was able to just play, up, oh, turn around. So then <laughs> I go out the correct way and within 100 yards come to my first roundabout. Okay. And again, I haven't read about, I, I didn't do any research. I had all these plans of oh, like, God. I'm gonna watch a YouTube video about adjusting to this. I'm gonna like go on my son's like Forza uh, is that the name of it? Yeah. Game game where I'm gonna drive on the left side of the road. Of course, I didn't do any of that. So I'm just facing it in the rain, trying to figure, where are the, all the windshield wipers? They're on this side. <laughs> of course they are. And so I, I, I pull out, I see the roundabout. I'm like, I don't know what, I, I don't know what exactly what I'm supposed to do here, but I can kind of see from my directions that I'm supposed to go around it and then head off in this direction. I get into the roundabout and I'm like, I think that, I'm looking at the navigation and then I'm looking at the roundabout, I'm like, I, then I kinda get disoriented and I just take one of the spires off of the you roundabout. Just you just crapshoot. The one that I thought was the right one. It was the wrong one. And I'm like, I'm already screwing up. It just it went into just a hotel parking lot. <laughs> well that's good actually. And so, which also had another roundabout. First of all. In a parking lot? The roundabouts are everywhere. And let me just say that after two weeks of doing this, well I would say, I had somebody tell me, three days you'll adjust. I would say it happened earlier than that. The, there were no more close calls, even the rest of that trip of driving into Edinburgh, going through multiple roundabouts, by the time I got to the hotel I was like, this isn't going to be that difficult. It wasn't until we went to the Highlands, so after being in Edinburgh for a couple of days, and. 
I basically just drove to the hotel, left the car parked at the hotel, and then took public transportation all around the city. So it wasn't like I was driving all around the city. The real driving started when we had to drive across the country up to Glencoe, which um, is basically like the gateway to the Highlands, so like the Scottish Highlands that you've seen in postcards and that kind of thing. Okay. There's a little town called Glencoe that is right inside the Highlands, uh, but not like you could go for hours and hours and hours to go up to like Loch Ness and all that, which we didn't end up doing. But that trip of driving up there, driving across the country, then driving into the Highlands, that was when things got very real because not only are you on the left side of the road, which I'd kind of gotten used to, the roads are like comically narrow. Oh. Like unbelievably narrow. Like wh why are they so narrow? You're asking yourself the entire time. They got and, a lot of space, right? And there's no shoulder at all on most of the roads. So you know how like, first of all, our roads are a little bit wider than the car. <laughs> the, especially when I was in a van, it felt like it was just as wide as my van and in America, then there's no shoulder. If we don't have a shoulder, there's a sign that says no shoulder. Yeah. That's how far we go. They just let you know when there is a shoulder. <laughs> That's oh. what signs say. It's the other way around. Uh, but you're you're driving uh, through the highlands, and then there's like a, you know, like a seven hundred year old rock wall on the side of the road. That's right up next to the thing. Right up next to the shoulder. There is no shoulder. And then there's another rock wall on the other side. Oh. And then there's these. Semi trucks are like they got to drive. They got to drive up there to the highlands somehow. They're a little bit narrower than what we would have in America, but they're still massive, giant trucks with large trailers behind them. And th those guys are basically—I don't know how they do it—they're fitting in this very small spot. And then the tourist buses, mm. just buses and buses of tourists who are coming up, same width. And then what was happening initially is I would like move over a little bit just instinctively to not hit them and I would hit the little, I would go off the road, like my left wheel would go off the road and then I'd be like and I'd have to get back on. Oh and then Paul and I were like constantly like checking in with each other and <laughs> we had both kind of independently discovered you kind of have to lean into the oncoming traffic, you know what I'm saying? You just overcome your, your tendency to want to pull away and you just lean in a little bit like, like I am my like mirror you, might touch no, like you steer into him or you just yeah yeah your head leans you're, you're, you're sort of mentally, mentally leaning but you're also turning a little bit so you're like hugging that line and you're grinding your teeth and you're puckering your anus oh yeah very very tight the whole time uh but I say by the end I was actually having fun but the one the biggest difference that just I know embracing noticed, death there was absolutely no way that I was going to fall asleep while driving because you had to be so on top of everything a, was working. Everything, yeah. the entire you were so engaged. Whereas here, you're just like Lizard the road. Brain. The road is you know forty feet wide. There's extra lanes. There's a shoulder that's as wide as the road itself. You just basically just go to sleep. Okay. You, you're not, no one's gonna fall asleep at the wheel there because you're so engaged. Um, but I, but I, uh, it, I'm so it, glad you didn't oh. hit anybody. And while I'm up in Glencoe, I'll, I'll move on from driving and throw it back to you, but while I'm up in Glencoe, which by the way, one of the most beautiful thing, places I've ever seen, very much reminded me of Kauai, a place that you've also been. Hawaii. Uh, in terms of just these incredibly green, giant faces of mountains that don't, like, there's some that have trees and some that have no, there's not a tree on it. It's just great. It's, it's one of the most beautiful landscapes I've ever been in. Um, and dr driving through that, uh, well, trying to like navigate and look and enjoy the scenery, but also not run into the tourist bus. That was a little harrowing. But while I'm up there in this little town, I basically find out through Jenna that no, I'm not. I'm not covered. I don't. I don't oh, my insurance does not cover this. And oh. my credit card, the fine print on the credit card says has all the exclusions, and one of them is nine plus passenger vans. <laughs> and I have a nine passenger van. So I'm up there and I'm like, I got no place to go. I get to physically go into one of the locations. So I'm like, I gotta make it into one of these locations you're, you're, without wrecking. You're teetering. But thankfully, uh, Jenna was able to talk to people that handle our insurance stuff and they were able to get it. And basically, 
give us a temporary policy until I could get to the next location so that I would be covered by insurance. Um, so that put me at ease a little bit and then eventually I was able to stop at one of the places and, and pay, the, pay the fee. But anyway, I didn't wreck. Just went off the road a few times, yeah, went it, the wrong direction quite a few times. And here's one hot tip, going back to the roundabout. You know, when in doubt on a roundabout, keep rounding about. Cause all you're gonna do is circle around. Right. Don't exit just because. Well, and let me it's tell you. It's a circle. I, I am pro roundabout now, in fact, when in doubt, keep rounding about. I'm I'm all about the roundabouts now. I, I think that it's a superior way to navigate than than a traffic light. Yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, on our second full day in Thailand, I had I had signed us up for a day trip out to Ayutthaya, which is the um, the original capital city of Thailand. Um, so it's built in the, I think this was, the, well I know, cause I'm looking at this now, mid 14th century. So 13, like 1350, you're building all of these um, watts, which is the word for temple out there. And if you watched Mortal Kombat the movie 1995. Oh, I'm a big fan. Uh, the opening scene, fight scene is there. Oh really? And man, I gotta tell you, I love me some ruins. Man, you would have loved it here too. Did you go to Stonehenge? I told you to go to Stonehenge. I could tell by the look on your face you ended up not going. I didn't go, okay. I, have, I have good reasons. All right, I, I respect you, you had a lot to do. I have a stone phobia. Uh, <laughs> Woodman got stone phobia. Um, so they've got this entire city that was, it, it, it was, it was taken over and it was it was ransacked, but it wasn't completely destroyed. And so a lot of these, and you can look on my Instagram for one of my only two posts was a selfie I took there. Um, that was a lot of fun to go there. Um, n like I said, 94% of the population is Buddhist. It's actually a requirement for all men but by age 20 to serve as a monk for like six six weeks? No, longer than that, uh, three months. Hmm. But it's voluntary and some people do it for much less, maybe even just a day or two. But that just goes to show you about. It's required but voluntary. Um, you gotta, you have to do it for some length of time. I think from a practical standpoint, it's they're not, they're not, it's expected. Okay. Um, is, is how it ends up shaking out, you know? Yeah. Um, and there are, there's so many temples, you know, it's like, tens of thousands of temples all, all over Thailand. Um, and these ruins are ruins of some of those original temples that then around Bangkok you see like the modern form which is basically the same except it's very fancy and ornate. Right. You can't miss these temples. Um, literally they're everywhere but also some of the most famous things to see in Bangkok, not in Ayutthaya where, where we saw the ruined older versions of the temples is to see these temples. So we, we didn't go to any of the temples. <laughs> uh, it's a thing to do but we didn't do it. Yeah, we kept saying we're gonna go visit this temple. Like we went on the river and we would see the temples from, I mean from like a, a block away or something and they're absolutely amazingly ornate and I really wanted to see them but we just didn't, there was so much to do when you factor in shopping and like <laughs> air conditioned malls. After day one and how I like burnt my family and wilted them, uh, we ended up not walking around too many temples or well, any temples. Well, it's interesting because we, you know, the, the equivalent are the, the, the giant old ornate churches of mm -hmm. Scotland and England that we, we actually ended up going in quite a few. Cathedrals? Yeah, so uh, you know, there's, this, there's like St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh. Uh, of course, we did Westminster Abbey and in, in London, which I think you had seen as well. Um, and, and there is a point, there is a point where you're like, kind of like, okay, this is absolutely incredible. The level of craftsmanship in this place is Detail. just bonkers. Uh, but I, once you've seen Westminster Abbey, it's like, okay, I'm gonna go into another one. It's gonna be, basically they took the same approach. I, I, I'm not saying that, it, I, by the end of the trip, I was like, I don't need to see any more of these because I feel like I, I've seen it, but 
the interesting thing, and this it sounds like you you experience the same thing. There's a whole lot of this sensation of going into a place and being like, this place was built in the year 1050. This was built in the 11th century or the 10th century or whatever. Yeah. And then you kind of just be like, man, this place is old. And you kind of just sit in the oldness. There's like a Which lot. Is, that, that's fun. It, it is, but I just. Until it, it's not anymore. Well, no, but we would just do it everywhere. It's like, this is the oldest bar in all of the UK. And you go in there and you're like, man, this place is old. Yeah. Nod your head a little bit. You're like, man, it's so being in such an old place. I, I knew that's how the kids would feel. That's why we did. I mean, I, the, I the enjoy, I'm, are a little... enjoyed it. I'm just saying that like it's a phenomenon to just go to an old thing and just talk about how old it is. But the the ruins were more fun because you could walk on, they let you walk on it. A lot of it you can just walk on and right. walk up and stuff. And there was one that we could still go inside. And again, there's not much in there, but it's like, and then they've got all these old Buddha statues that are like falling apart and you can see this, that like the skeleton is made out of wood and it's exposed and then it used to be bronze, very ornate. Um, so I really loved Ayutthaya. That was that was totally worth the day trip there and then you know getting car sick on the way back trying to figure out why my ATM card wouldn't work for three hours. Um, Did you straighten that out? Straightened it out, yeah. Um, but I mean we took a canal tour, there's lots of, canals off of the main river in Bangkok and that was a lot of fun, being able to see a lot of the houses and a lot of the temples that are off the main drag and these monitor lizards swimming in the canals that are like six feet long and like uh, their trunk is like bigger around than my trunk, just swimming. Uh, they're not safe, right? Um, they they have venom but they if they were to, they might hurt a an infant or like a little to of a toddler. Really? But they're, they're in the park there. They'll eat turtles and dead fish and stuff like that, but uh, it was cool to see them. I thought it was a freaking alligator and then it started climbing up the stairs into somebody's backyard and it was a freaking monitor lizard. I call it a Komodo dragon, but that's not what it Komodo was. Komodo dragons, no, they're dangerous for real though. It wasn't a Komodo dragon. Um, but then that night, that second night, it hit me. It hasn't hit me digestively, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not having any movement. You know, you talk about getting the pomegranate juice or like eating mm. the street meat or. How many days? This is this was, um, the second, the, well the third night. Right, okay. I'm like, I have not gone. That's the problem. This is like summer camp all over again. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I gotta do something about this. You didn't take your fiber with you? Didn't take my fiber with me because I've been I've been drinking my breakfast smoothie religiously with just some flaxseed in it, and I don't take fiber anymore. Yeah, and I took my breakfast smoothie though. pack, but I didn't take my flaxseed. That was a big mistake, man. Yeah. And you know, with with my anxiety, you I think that your every everything beard grows in white. Now. Yeah, <laughs> everything know, puckers gotta, up. You got to worry about that fiber. Everything puckers up, like you driving on the on the cobblestone streets or wherever you were. Mm -hmm. So then I'm going down to like the drugstore and I'm like, man, I gotta get, I gotta get the old enema. I gotta get this. You went, hold on, so you you went straight to enema? Like I, Christy, like, hold on, that, Christy I, had a bunch of these stool softener pills. Yeah, there's, and a, I and there's a few steps before enema. For, I'm no, just saying, there's for, a few steps to, for, before enema. For like 36 hours before that, I had started taking stool softener pills. Like two, three at a time, nothing. And I I could just feel that like there was like. Oh gosh. I was just, I was getting bottom heavy. <laughs> it's just not good, man. And I, you know, so we're, we're at the end of, we're in the middle of the street and we're like trying to find a pharmacy and like nothing's in English in the pharmacy. And it's like, and they're not gonna draw a picture of an enema. So it's like. You had to demonstrate. The only, you take like a Barbie doll in there I and like, say, this is what I. <laughs> yeah, I brought, I did bring a Barbie doll for <laughs> so that I could communicate with people. <laughs> I, well, how, okay, what did, great. You, what did this you This American going up with a, a bent over Barbie doll, like doing that motion, it's like, what am I asking for? <laughs> That's true, you are in Bangkok, you gotta be, gotta be careful. <laughs>
So I brought you back a souvenir. That's very special to me. Hold on, it's not the turd, is it? <laughs> Look at that, this is what I found. Give, give him a little ASMR there. Now open it, it did have some English on it. It's a little, little pack there. You want me to there. open it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's for you, it's a souvenir. It's the thing that meant the most to me on my trip. Now, Look at that, hold that up for the people. It's a lollipop. <laughs> now this is an infant or baby enema, which is the only thing I could find. This would, one doesn't. Would you double or triple up on this? This one, this one, yeah, it had, the other ones that I bought had a, had a ball-headed baby's picture on it. So I was like, well, I guess I need to get three. So I got three and I, I, I squeezed two up in there first night and I sat down and they had this, there was a trash can in front of the. Hold on, you, you're, what about the toilet? <laughs> I, sat, I went back to the hotel room, I sat down on you the. You got confused. I sat down on the toilet and oh my gosh, nothing, I was just pain. Yeah, you should have gone two or maybe three or four. I went two, pain man, and I grabbed the, I had this little trash can, I grabbed that and I like, I tried to create a squatty potty situation like, and then, Christy's like walking in like, I need to wash my face before I go to bed. I'm like, God, now's not a good time. How many times? She's like, you look like you're about to rocket into space. How many times did you reference Chip <laughs> in this? Um, oh, I don't use his last name, <laughs> damn. <laughs> a friend from college who shall remain last nameless. Okay. Chip B. Okay. He went to, he, he spent like months in China and then he ate too much rice and didn't go and like deliver. It's a legendary story. Oh man, I mean, he had like a 12 hour bout with like a, yeah. he had a baby. Someone actually adopted his turd <laughs> after. It was that big. He took it to the local, to the local adoption agency. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared that that was gonna happen to me. Like, um, it was a painful night and then like the next day, nothing. So then the next day, so two days later, I'm, I'm in the same situation again. I'm gonna quit holding this, by the way. <laughs> that one's not used. It was in a sealed package. Yeah, it, it still got the top sealed on it, but um, by the time we got to our second destination, we left Bangkok and we So went, you did, t it, nothing came out? No, it, 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 it did eventually oh, okay. work. But then two days later, I'm doing the same thing again. It's just like my, my lower GI. You're eating a lot GI, of rice, right? Rice noodles, right, rice and noodles. Yeah, you gotta, yeah, you gotta balance that out. Meats, but um, not a lot of fiber in any of that. Not a lot of fiber, but um, I became. It's like it shut down. Like my intestines just shut down. They froze. So th these bulbs became very special to me, and I had to go buy more. I had to go buy more, and you I had to, to go be, buy more. You have to be careful. How you can't just be become reliant on enemas. Well, let me tell you about it. The moment I got home, I went up to my toilet. Totally good, totally fine. It was like, it, it's like my body knew. It's like my butt knew when it hit my seat, everything was fine. Y you know what? Just I, I, loosen I've, right up. I've switched to uh, the, the fiber, the, the gummy fibers, fiber gummies. Yeah, because you're, you're regressing. Uh, I'm u I'm using infant bulbs and you're using infant. I just don't, they're, they're, they fiber. taste good. I just took three a day, no problems, man. Cause I was, my diet was like a lot, a lot of meat, yep. a lot of like pie, meat pies. And bringing like a meta, like a fiber mix is, they think that's it, problematic It looks like trip. drugs. You know, the TSA makes you, makes you open it up, tell them what it is. Um, so that, I mean, that was the highlight of my Bangkok trip was, was these little bulbs. <laughs> um, you know, I'll talk about Chiang Rai and then Koh Samoy when you talk about your mom, I'm not saying you're dumb with anything else you wanna say here, but I'll save all that stuff for the next one. But um, just to summarize Bangkok for me, uh, as overwhelming as it was in, in every way, I think it was it was very memorable to like, I felt like we really experienced the city, like walking around and like, um, we, did, we did sign up for a, a food tour where a guy walks us around and like, gets us to eat food from places on the street that like we probably wouldn't have had the guts to eat on our yeah. own. Like we we ate this papaya salad that, you know, he helped them make it not too spicy cuz you know, they could really torch an American over right. there. 
Um, and then we're eating this like pork and rice thing and everyone was like, oh, this is really good. And then we walk around the corner to where he got it from because he just brought it around the corner to us and it was just a bunch of pig's feet hanging up. It was a pig's feet and rice place. And I'm glad we ate it first because. You've had pig's feet though. I know, but um, I, w I don't elect to have it. But it was great. Um, and then he's like, he kept taking us on shortcuts and he would say, I'm gonna take you on a shortcut through to this next street market and it would be this back alley where it would just be dark and rats running everywhere. And he'd be like, don't worry about the rats. It's, it's, very, it's very clean here. <laughs> the, the, the rats clean up everything. <laughs> <laughs> Even the other dead rats and dead cats that we would see in taking the shortcut. Very clean dead cats. So I, you know, he, he emailed me afterward. He was like, please write a chip provisor review. And I'm like, you know what? I'm Leave just out gonna, the dead cats. I'm just gonna email you some constructive criticism about when my family didn't feel safe. But you know, just to help you out. But I'm not gonna do this publicly. Oh. Or on a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and he was gracious for the feedback, but the the food was the food was great. Being in Bangkok was a great experience, and I just think that we soaked it in, and then we moved on to more resort life, which I'll get into uh, in the next installment. Uh, well, I think we can we can wrap it up there. I uh, I'll cover just a couple other uh, other details of things that happened, but it's it really kind of my trip has definitely been um, overshadowed. So to speak, by what happened to yeah, quit licking your the enema, please. Um, the uh, what happened to my mom, which we'll get into. Uh, but before we go, wreck and effect something that actually was very useful on the uh, the trip, and something that gummy uh, fiber lock uh, pointed out to me was this website, the true size dot com, which I know it could that seems like it could be a few different things. Uh, but what it actually is, is it's a world map. Let me show this to you. The true size dot com. So it's a, we it's a website where you type in a country. So I've typed in United Kingdom. Okay. And then you can take it and you can move it all around the world to see how big it is compared to something you actually oh. know. So we, were, we had this argument like, how big do you think the UK is? And I said, I think it's probably from Georgia to Virginia. I said that before. And of course, it, that's about how big it is. Um, but it also takes into account this, uh, I can't remember the name of it. There's an effect, basically like, okay, Greenland looks massive on a map, right? Like the global wrap effect? Yeah, but there's a specific name for it. I think it's the global wrap effect. And uh, so let me put it in Greenland. Well, I kinda wanna know how big Thailand is. Well, let me show you this. So like, okay, here's Greenland. Which it looks huge. It looks massive, but when you bring it down. Oh, it gets, dang! It gets, it's it gets little, man. It gets tiny. So basically that effect that is, it's the whole idea of you've got a. Stretching it. If you try to take the skin of a globe off, it won't lay down flat. And so basically as things move towards the poles, they get exaggeratingly large uh, on a flat map. I think Thailand will go from the bottom tip of Florida up to Washington DC. Okay, so. It's, Thailand's kinda long, it's got this peninsula down there. Well, I put Thailand in there. Let's see, Thailand. T H I G H. There it is. Uh, okay. Now drag that over to Florida. Such a redneck thing to do. How much bigger is Thailand than Florida? Oh my goodness. Way bigger. What? What? You're dragging it over the UK. Where are you? No, the UK is already there because I'm. Oh, you! Oh, it stays. You could create a, a no Pangea. You see that? Did you start at the tip of Florida? No, put the tip of Thailand at the tip of. There you go. And now, did that go to Washington D.C.? It goes almost exactly to Washington D.C. Okay, well, see, because I've traveled all over that land. Um, and of course, if you move it up here to the poles, I mean, look how big it gets. Look how big Thailand is. Thailand is as big as Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you're, you're subverting the use of this thing. Okay, your wreck has been in effect, man. Yeah, the truesize.com. True true for those of you who are very interested in the true size of a country and how it uh, <laughs> coordinates to where you're at or other places in the world. Hashtag Ear Biscuits, let us know uh, 
if you want to contribute to the conversation in any way or, or correct anything that we said or things that we should have done that we didn't do, I'm sure you want to do that. Oh, you should have done this. It's like, how are we going to feel? Where, you know, when am I going to go back to Thailand now? So don't do that. And then next week, we will find out what the heck happened to Rhett's mom. To watch more Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist on the right. To watch the previous episode of Ear Biscuits, click on the playlist to the left. And don't forget to click on the circular icon to subscribe. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. Thanks for being your mythical best.